Uh, our first slide we're going to see in a second um, is the, is to embrace the routine of learning a language online. This is something that is so central to um, how you're going to succeed and how you're going to learn a, a language online and actually how you're going to utilize it for the long-term uh, usage. Uh, so the first thing here to keep in mind is that you need to find your schedule and you're all of you're probably misunderstanding what I mean by this first point. Uh, what I actually mean by schedule is that document that you're going to have in your class that says class schedule. You have a syllabus, which you have to read, and then you have the schedule. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take that schedule and I'd encourage you to print it out or have it easily accessible on your electronic devices for you to actually cross stuff off as you turn it in or as you finish it, as you study it, and as you do your items on that schedule. Essentially what this is, is the professor and those who developed the course, they put the schedule here to actually help you to embrace the routine of language learning, if that makes sense. So you're not alone in your pursuit of embracing a routine. We've actually provided this important document to help you uh, to find a routine. And you're gonna find as you look at that schedule, it's, it's probably gonna be fairly detailed and it's gonna provide you even what you could be doing every day as you study for those quizzes, exams, as you do your translations and as you work with your vocab, that schedule is your friend. Uh, the second thing on here is finding your time. And this is probably what many of you thought I meant by finding your schedule. Finding your time. Most of us are either morning people or evening people. Some of you are blessed to be both. Um, and, and maybe at different points in your life, you're one or the other of these. But it's likely that you're going to find yourself being very successful, waking up early or possibly staying up a little bit late to work on your language things. Some of you have strange schedules and funny work situations, but in general, most of you will find a great benefit for setting apart some chunk of time in the morning or in the evening to sit down and to um, find a routine of studying and working on your, your course. As many of you probably already know, our language classes are extremely difficult. It's hard to learn language. You need to invest the time. So finding your time is gonna be key to that. The next thing is finding your place. I put here coffee shop or bunker because there's different types of people. Some people work well in a coffee shop. You know, you hear the people talking around you, you hear them making coffee, dishes banging together, and that relaxes you and it helps you study. Uh, some of you need a bunker, all right? You need somewhere completely quiet and uh, just embrace what you work well with. Find your spot, find your place. For me, as I started learning Hebrew, it was on my dining room table. I just sat there early in the morning when my kids had not waken up, woken up yet, and I studied. So you need to find your place. That might be a coffee shop, might be a bunker, or somewhere in between. Uh, finally, find your rhythm. Uh, one of the most important things you're going to learn, if you haven't learned it already, in your language learning classes is how to actually find a habit of being in the scriptures in the original languages. So you may not have expected to learn that as you enrolled in your online language class, uh, but it's actually one of the most important things you're gonna learn because you're not gonna master um, Hebrew or Greek in the short amount of time that you have through your 16 week or whatever, however long your class is. You're not gonna master it. And so what you're gonna learn is the routine of regularly reading the scriptures in the original languages. And you're gonna keep that rhythm and routine beyond your final exam. And that's kind of our hope for you uh, to learn the biblical languages online. And now John's gonna talk with you a bit about studying for quizzes and exams. Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. Um, so yeah, my name is John. Um, I'm also an instructional designer and a PhD student in Old Testament here at Southern Seminary. And I get the fun topic about talking about quizzes and exams. You know, I took um, classical Greek and biblical Hebrew in, your, in university, and uh, I actually didn't do so well. Um, one of the biggest reasons was because of this disconnect that I felt between um, my studying and actually how I would take the exams. So for instance, I loved going over vocab and translating and learning from the textbook, but I realized that there was this disconnect between the routines that I was doing at home didn't match how I would be quizzed when the exams actually came up. 
Um, so just to give you guys some, some help, I think you can break down basically any question you might experience in about four um, subheadings. So these can fall under the categories of vocabulary, grammar, paradigms, and parsing would be included here, as well as translation. <clears throat> so for vocabulary, for instance, I know a lot of students, um, in order to learn vocabulary, they can look at the back of their book or in their chapter vocab and just glance over it and glance over it, maybe for hours um, and, and even days, but they're not actually memorizing that vocab. They're not internalizing it. And I think the reason why is because you're not quizzing yourself to recall back from memory um, what you're trying to learn. Um, so, it, you know, in order to familiarize yourself with vocabulary, you can do this in lots of different ways, um, such as making flashcards, writing out the words by hand, using Quizlet, which is a really helpful resource. Um, so do those things to familiarize yourself with, the, with uh, the words. But then I would encourage you, as you go to prepare for an exam, test yourself by forcing yourself to reproduce the words in the hardest way possible. So for instance, if you know that in a Hebrew exam, you'll be asked a word in English and you'll have to reproduce the word with the vowels written in Hebrew, well, you should do that as you're preparing for the exam. Um, one thing that's really important here is some of our exams, um, you might write by hand and upload a document afterwards. Other exams might have you typing in the language, in the biblical language. Um, so un practicing in a way where you're prepared to give that response, that will be really helpful for you. So the next category is uh, grammar, grammatical terms. You know, as a native English speaker, there's a lot of terms that you'll encounter in your textbook that kind of um, feel reminiscent of something that you should have learned in eighth grade that you maybe never learned if you were like me, maybe you struggled with those terms. So just one encouragement would be don't overestimate your understanding of grammatical terms. Instead, what I would challenge you is as you're going through the textbook, make a running glossary of those terms for each chapter. And I would encourage you to put down not only the definition of the word, if you have to look it up or search online to find out what that term was that you couldn't remember, write that down and then give one example of what that looks like. So for instance, what's the difference between a long vowel and a short value vowel or a construct state or a definite state? Put those things in your book so that you, by the time your quiz comes around or your exam, you're ready to give them, to give those answers. Next is uh, paradigms or parsings. Um, and my encouragement here is not to be afraid of those challenging terms. So for instance, I can remember, um, as I was learning, uh, I, I didn't want to have to give any second heiress terms uh, on an exam, or I didn't want to have to be able to distinguish between the vayiktal of yara and ra'a because they seem so similar and they've, I found them very confusing. But actually, my encouragement would be identify those things that you find to be most challenging and know them the best for your exam. You know, the thing is languages, they build on one another. And so by challenging yourself with those difficult topics, you're actually reinforcing the easier ones. And then finally, translation. You know, this is the heart of why we learn these languages so that we can know and embody the text. Um, but one caution that I would give is don't just, so normally, you know, for, for a translation, your professor might give you a range of texts and they might pick one or two or, or several verses for you to translate on an exam. But I would recommend that you don't read or memorize the passage in English or your native language. Um, similarly, as you're preparing for the translation, um, don't overly rely on other help such as Bible software or other resources because many times these can function as kind of a crutch and then when they're taken away, they're it's very surprising and challenging whenever you move forward into the exam. Instead, I would encourage you to use only the minimum resources that are permitted and go through that text several times, make sure that you have everything worked out in your mind, and then memorize the text in the original language, um, in the original languages. I'll actually go over um, some audio Bibles that can be really helpful. As Dr. Garrett often says, 
um, by going over and rereading the language multiple times, you start to embody it and it starts to grab hold of you. And that's when we actually understand the text and can reproduce it very easily in an exam. And so those would be my encouragement for you guys as you start preparing for the quizzes and exams you'll experience in the online classes. And Jonathan, you will carry us forward. Yeah, thanks, John. That's really helpful. Um, to hear all that. I want to remind all of you too, if you uh, have any questions as we're going through this, feel free to type your questions in the chat. If we have questions in there at the end, we'll, we'll do our best to answer them with the remaining time we have. Uh, a next key part for you as you're learning the languages is to learn with other people. It, it's important to recognize that God created us as personal beings that are uh, meant to learn in community with one another. And uh, some of you as online students might assume that this aspect of language learning is not available to you, but I'd like to argue it's actually extremely available to you, and it's actually built into our courses, and there's also opportunities for you in your own place, wherever you live, for you to find a way to learn with other people. Of course, I have this uh, passage here from Ecclesiastes 4, which I think is really helpful uh, for us as we work together, because learning language is a challenge. It is very difficult, and this passage really helps us understand um, the, the joy and the importance of working together with other people. So why should we learn with others? We should learn with, with others because we need accountability, we need encouragement, we need variety, and we need an opportunity for application. So essentially, we're lazy people. If, if we're left to ourselves, we'll often just get lazy. And so we, we really need accountability. So how do we, how do we fix that? Uh, we have accountability questions or a partner. This person doesn't even need to uh, be learning the original languages or uh, be in your class. This can be uh, anybody in your life, uh, a neighbor, a sibling, a parent, uh, a spouse. Uh, anybody can essentially be your accountability partner. And you can even have rewards built into this, uh, where this accountability per person asks you every week how your studying is going, what you've done, if you fulfilled what you needed to do. And after a certain number of weeks, there's some kind of uh, reward set up for you. Uh, the, the, next, <clears throat> the next reason why is encouragement. We really need encouragement in learning the languages because uh, le learning languages is, is extremely difficult. Uh, it took you years and years and years to learn your, your first language, your native tongue. It took you many years as a child when your brain was sharp and you were developing. It took you many years and we're kind of cramming down an entire ancient language into a short course uh, or into multiple courses. And so you really need encouragement to just press through and keep on pushing. And once again, um, this can be somebody, somebody can provide this encouragement that hasn't been through this process, though it'd be really beneficial for you uh, to have uh, somebody who's, who knows Greek or Hebrew well, who can encourage you uh, to continue forth. Um, and, and this also where I can uh, mention some of the stuff built into our courses. We have regular Zoom calls that you will have with your professor in which you'll interface with other students in your class and with the professor. And this is a great time for you to have that encouragement. And uh, even the assignments that you'll take are a level of accountability for you to help you uh, learn in community. It's also important to have variety and methods of applying what you're learning. And so one thing that I did uh, a long time ago as I was um, see seeking to sharpen my Greek skills is I found uh, another Christian who was really interested in learning biblical Greek. And I worked alongside of him as he made his way through an elementary Greek textbook. And it really helped me as someone seeking to better understand the language to walk alongside some of someone else and teach them and answer that, their questions. Um, and it really helped me sharpen uh, to, to learn the language better by teaching uh, the language. And honestly, sometimes we even need a, a way to vent. We need someone to tell about the frustrations of learning Greek and Hebrew. And we also need someone to vent with to tell them the excitement of this verse that you translated. I remember the first time I translated John 3.16. I was thrilled uh, at, at the fact that I was able to translate it. And so it's nice to be able to talk with someone else and to uh, enjoy that together with other people. And my list here is certainly not exhaustive, but it's simply um, kind of the, the low-hanging fruit um, for why, how, and, and who of uh, learning the language with other, other people. Uh, John will continue here with the important 
important question of uh, how to utilize varied resources in learning the languages. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. So um, this is a, a topic that I really enjoy talking about because uh, I, I like stuff. I like collecting uh, different things. Um, I know Jonathan does as well. Um, but just to give you guys an example of some resources that are some are essential for learning the language and others are just really helpful. Um, and, and we think they could be really an encouragement to you as you learn uh, how to embody these biblical languages as you study them. So the first thing is the biblical text. You know, I can imagine many of you probably don't read your English or whatever your native language Bible is in, in a, a paperback um, pew Bible version. You probably have one that suits your needs much better than that. Um, and so my encouragement is to find a biblical text that works for you. It has what you need for it. So I have a couple examples here, and I'm going to show you a lot of resources. And we actually have a document that has all of these links that you can find them on Amazon or other links online. So don't worry about writing any of this down. But just to give you an idea, the standard um, biblical texts are the Nestle Alon or the Biblica Hebraica Stuttgartensia, the BHS. So these are kind of your academic editions. Um, and these are really helpful whenever you're writing papers or doing anything like that. It's really important as you study the biblical languages to have these available. Um, or if you're like me, I have to show this out because it's like one of my prized possessions. You can bind them together um, and have it done uh, individually. And then, you know, you can take it wherever you go to church or whatever, um, and it can be really helpful that way. Um, but there are other editions as well, um, which might be more suitable to you. For instance, this is the Tyndale House edition, which has a smaller apparatus. And actually the creators of this wanted to create something that you could take to church and it would be suitable for you. So that could be an option for you as well. Um, now, what if maybe as a someone who's just beginning the languages, you need some more help. Um, well, there are reader's editions as well. For instance, this is the uh, BHS reader's edition. This is published by the German Bible Society. And you can see it's, it's nice and thick. This will actually give you glosses of words that you wouldn't be familiar with as a first year Hebrew student. Um, and so actually with just the helps at the bottom of, the, of each page, you can read much easier. Um, and so this is this could be a helpful resource. Um, Zondervan also has a whole Hebrew and Greek edition. So it's the same sort of thing. I actually think the German Bible Society is sometimes more helpful. Um, but if you want something in one volume that you could take to church, take it with you, um, use it as your Bible, this is a really good option. Um, and then we also have an author in our midst uh, that I have to show because actually Jonathan Algren has um, put together an illustrated uh, edition. Uh, it's a reader's or it's um, it's basically just the edition of First Kings, but with um, illustrations to help you as you read. Uh, there, this is from Glossa House, and there's several other versions of this of different books um, in the Hebrew and Greek Bible, and so this might be helpful for you as well. Um, next. A lexicon is really important as you're learning a language because you need to pick up vocabulary that you're not familiar with. And thankfully, um, through the investment of others, we've been given invaluable resources as we learn these languages. So for instance, this is Brown Driver Briggs. Um, and again, you can find all these in the documents that we'll give you. Um, but this is really helpful. This is only about between 20 and $40. And this is the go-to Hebrew lexicon. Every Hebrew student should have this. Uh, now, this next one is much more of an investment. I think this is about $130, $140 on Amazon. Um, but this is known as BDAG. This is... Um, the standard Greek lexicon, and, and these are these are investments, but they're helpful for when you come across a word that you don't know, you need a reliable place to go to to look for that answer, to find out more about the context and the usage of that word. Um, and so these are really important resources. Now, there are other helps as well. So if, um, Actually, before that, uh, we do also have Daily Dose, which I'm sure probably many of you are familiar with. This was started by 
um, Dr. Rob Plummer. Uh, this is in Hebrew and Greek and amongst other languages as well. We just recently launched Aramaic. And so these will be very helpful as well as Olive with Beth and um, Alpha with Angela, which are um, YouTube uh, videos that can help provide a supplement to your learning in a traditional academic format, um, you know, online uh, in a school. Now, other resources would be supplementary grammars. So for instance, this is um, English grammar to ace New Testament Greek. So if you were like me, as you're learning these languages, you come across grammatical terms that sound vaguely familiar, but you can't actually pick them up that easily. This is really helpful for that. And there's a Hebrew version as well. Then there are also other grammars um, like uh, Williams Hebrew syntax, which is really helpful for when you come across and you wanna know what are all of the uses of key in the Hebrew Bible? Because I see one that doesn't seem to be um, something that I'm familiar with. This is a really good, cheap go-to resource. Now, another addition is Gesinius. This is much older, um, but one of the helpful parts of this edition is you can actually look in the index and find whatever verse you're looking at in the Hebrew Bible, and it will give you um, many times that there's interesting grammatical um, uh, constructions or different things going on in the text, and this will help provide some clues as to how to understand and interpret that. Now, just some other quick resources. This is um, uh, the Handy Guide to New Testament Greek. This is really helpful for Greek syntax, just a simple thing to have um, whenever you're wondering about all the different uses for a participle. Um, this is a really good go-to resource. And then finally, uh, these compact guides. Um, these are just really good. You, you can keep them in your backpack. Anytime you have a question, um, these can be helpful. Just go to guides. Um, and again, you'll see that in uh, the, the document that we provided. Next, something that's really helpful is an audio Bible. Um, I use these every single day. When I'm reading the text, I want to hear it out loud. Um, so we have a link to a really, really good Hebrew one and also a Greek one that um, as you're translating, as you're trying to memorize these texts, uh, these are really helpful to embody the text uh, and to bring it to your heart to when it, you know, have it come to mind as you think about and meditate on this text. And then finally, of course, we have Bible software. We, we don't always jump to this uh, immediately because we want you to be familiar with the text, uh, but these are really helpful resources that we've been blessed with as Christians. Um, if you go to Logos and slash SVTS, you can get um, a special uh, offer um, being a Southern student. And then Accordance is also a really helpful resource. So these are something that I think would be a really good blessing to you as you're learning these languages. And we would encourage you to make use of all that you can to not just learn these to get the credit, but to really embody these languages and use them in your ministry. And now Jonathan's going to continue um, about applying these languages even as you are learning them. You're muted. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, John. I appreciate it. On behalf of John, I'd like to apologize to your y'all's wallet. Uh, There's so many good resources, but I want to assure you that John covered the most important and cost-effective resources. I would say resources. Uh, Dr. Gentry, who who teaches here at Southern, still sometimes. Um, he mentioned, he made the offhanded joke that for many of your classes at Southern, this is not completely true, but he said, many of your classes at Southern, at Southern, you'll buy the textbooks required for the course, you'll read them once, and then they'll collect dust on your shelf. Uh, you won't ever read them again, which is, which is not completely true. Uh, but he said that to make a case for investing in the language resources, because these resources are much more of reference resources, which you'll use repeatedly throughout your ministry. Uh, and, and I can attest to, I can certainly attest to that. Uh, and actually I have two more resources. Uh, in a sense, I'm kind of footnoting this whole entire talk uh, with these two textbooks, uh, Greek for Life and Hebrew for Life. Uh, these two books definitely closely mirror what we're kind of talking about here. And as a matter of fact, some of you may actually be required to read one of these uh, for your courses because they're very helpful. And it also relates to this final uh, slide that we have here, uh, applying the languages while learning them. 
Um, because at the end of the day, uh, we're keeping the end in sight. And there's a whole chapter about this in both of these textbooks about reading, reading the Greek New Testament, reading the Hebrew Old Testament. Um, and uh, our hope is that all the slides we just went through kind of build up to this, that we sh you should be using your routines um, to apply the languages while you learn them. These routines should be built into you as you go to the text every day and read your Greek New Testament, read your Hebrew Old Testament, because that's what you'll be doing even after the class is done. Uh, even the exams, the exams are generally centered upon a certain grammatical principle and also have translation in them. And so building this routine to study for your quiz and exams should eventually translate by the end of the class into um, having a routine of reading the Bible in its original languages. Also, uh, meeting with other people and learning with other people, this is crucial for you to continue to do even after the class is finished. And so um, as I uh, finished Greek and Hebrew um, in my undergrad, I actually found a pastor that was close by that um, went to uh, Trinity, um, and, he, and he met with me regularly as we translated just a small bit every week together, and it's important for us to apply the language while learning it while you're in class so that after the class is done, you can continue to do that. And also, like I said, these resources, you can continue to use them throughout your ministry. You'll never graduate from these uh, resources. You'll continually go back to them, especially those lexicons as you run upon words you've not seen before or have forgotten gotten. Uh, so yeah, next point here is lean into your Bible reading. Uh, at the beginning of your class, you won't be doing quite as much translation. The most of our courses have a little bit, uh, but by the end of the class, uh, much of your time will be hopefully spent in the biblical text as you're taking those grammatical lessons and applying them as you're reading, uh, reading the text. That's the ultimate goal that we have, that you would learn um, to love the scriptures as they were written and um, to stick close to, to the text. It's also helpful for you to find encouragement um, as you, um, you, you can get stuck in paradigm and vocab fever, um, but as you're translating the text, there's just so much encouragement found uh, in, in reading the words of the apostles and the prophets um, in their original languages. Um, and uh, finally, as I kind of said before, our hope for you as you finish the course is for you to be transitioning into uh, your long-term state. Your long-term state is daily reading of the Greek New Testament and Hebrew Old Testament. Um, of course, there's holidays, there's days off, I, I get it, um, but our joy and our hope for you is uh, have a routine of reading the language and using the Hebrew and Greek Bible for your own devotions and for others uh, as you prepare sermons, Bible studies, lessons, and, and such for your ministry. One final note um, that I would like to say is I've had some students uh, mention to me that as they're learning the language, they're looking forward to basically moving beyond their English Bibles and just using, um, you know, their Greek New Testament, Hebrew Old Testament. And I'd like to discourage that uh, because at the end of the day, it's going to take you a very long time for you to master the languages. And uh, if you decide to abandon your English Bible because you think it's lesser, um, then I think it could really uh, be detrimental to your own spiritual growth. So I'd encourage you, as you're learning the languages, uh, devote yourself to continue to do your devotions. Certainly incorporate your uh, Greek and Hebrew into your devotion times, but be sure that doesn't take away from um, regular reading of your Bible, whether it be in English or in the original languages.